what in the world is that? I mean, they've never seen anything like it. Hey, this is Jason from Denworks. Got something kind of cute here for you. It's a uh, 1964 CJ5. Just a great little rig, and uh, it's had a lot of uh, just different little modifications and, and different things. I got my friend Wayne here from uh, Ackman Garage. I let him drive it in. I wanted to make him feel a little special. So I said, hey, you want to drive the Jeep in? He's like, sure. So I had to, had to teach him how to drive a, a manual transmission. He's only good at uh, automatics. So, anyways, uh, he's smiling and they're mad at me now, but it's all right. So, anyways, we'll do a little walk around and uh, just show you some different stuff about it. You can see here it's done like a military Jeep. It isn't a military Jeep. It's not an M38A1 uh, that they used in the Korean War. Uh, those started in 1952, um, all the way up into the 60s. And uh, so, very popular Jeep. And uh, you can hear it's got a little bit of a rumble. It's got a a Buick Dauntless um, um, V6 in it. Then they, this is a 64. They started putting those in these Jeeps around 1965 or 66. And uh, so it's not uncommon that it's in there. So uh, anyways, we'll do a little walk around and uh, just show you some different things. It's got some nice little light guards on the front. You would see those on am 38 a one It's got a jack here in the front. You know, it looks nice. The uh, you know, one thing you'll notice here, and this is purposely done, usually the CJ5's fenders would come down to about right there. They actually bob these to make it look like a flat fender, and uh, which is kind of cool, and uh, I don't mind that at all. So we'll just walk around here and uh, just show you some, you know, just little tiny imperfections that it has. There's a, you know, a few little scratches and, and different things. This here is a little vent. You can see here, this is where you can have doors on it if you want. One thing that I put on it and uh, is brand new tires. I got these from Coker. These are Firestone 7x16s. And uh, they're in really nice shape. You can see actually the knobbies are on there. And uh, so I, I just bought those. It's got Warren hubs. I've actually got a video when I put it underneath on my lift. I'll show it working in four wheel drive and everything so you can see it. Uh, see it working and it's also which is really cool about this it's got a pto on it and, it and it works too so go ahead and rev it up there a little bit wayne i think he's got the choke yeah he had the choke on you know but it sounds real nice it's got uh, dual exhaust on it he just killed it i just turned it on yeah oh you did okay uh anyways let's go ahead and uh show you the lights got your headlights got blinkers We got left, then we got right, and I was informed a minute ago by Wayne, you should uh, do it from your perspective if you were driving it. So we had right and we had left. So go around here and we'll look at the back. I'll probably never correct that now that I've been uh, corrected. So we got the right, we got left, then we got uh, brake lights, and then we got uh, regular head or uh, tail lights. Yep, and we got tail lights. So everything's working, uh, you know, in general on except the backup lights. But we'll just look here across the cow. You know, it's actually in really good shape. Or not the cow, you know, here's the cow across the rocker here. Looks good. You know, the bodywork on it, it isn't actually too bad. Matching spare. This isn't a new, well, it's a, a kind of a new old stock spare, but this isn't a brand new tire, but it's actually in good shape. You can tell it hasn't hardly been run. You can look across here in the back. You know, this tailgate comes down. Got a gas can on it. You can just look look here. You know, the body's actually in pretty nice shape. And, uh, you know, there's little repairs underneath of it and uh, different things. But uh, overall, 
really solid. I'll show you the interior here in a minute. You know, I don't see any rust anywhere on it. You'll see a few little waves in the body, but actually, honestly, that's not probably uncommon on a military Jeep. It actually looks better than a military Jeep in general. And uh, one thing here that they also put on here on uh, M388ones, this here they usually had, uh, this is just simulated on here. They had, um, <clears throat> this is where the batteries went for uh, 24 volts, so there would be two batteries in there. It obviously doesn't have that in there now. And uh, if you wanted to take the top off, I put a brand new top on it. And uh, you'll see in some of the, the pictures too that you can take this down. I thought it was kind of fun. I just put it up here. I've never done it before just to make it a little more airy. And uh, so anyways, you can just unstrap it there and uh, put it on the footman loops, and uh, which is kind of cool. And um, so overall, I mean, it's... It's in pretty nice shape. Hopefully it gives you a little bit of an idea, just the way the body looks. You know, in a video it kind of, you know, helps more than just doing photos and uh, in general. So we'll go ahead and uh, pop the hood. Okay, here we are uh, underneath the hood. Just wanted to show you a few things before we start it up. And uh, if you look at the inner fender aprons, they actually look real nice. You know, the front of the cowl looks in good shape. You can see there it's got a dry cell battery as well. You can see this apron is in actually pretty good shape. And uh, radiator support and everything looks good. And you'll notice here the uh, radiator's black, but this is actually aluminum radiator. And it's also got an electric fan in it. And uh, right here I'll just point out the VIN number 57548161. 002 that does match the the title and uh, but if you look underneath the hood here it's a that's a Jeep Dauntless V6 and uh, that's actually a Buick motor um, they like I mentioned before they uh, it's not uncommon that it's it's in these Jeeps they actually ran them from the factory this way but but not in 64 it was like 66 so we'll go ahead and uh, start it up so you can hear it run you know it actually starts up pretty good Got to pull the choke a little bit and uh, runs real smooth. And uh, just rev it a little bit. You know, it's got a nice Jeep sound. And uh, one thing I'll point out uh, down here, you can see the, the exhaust, the exhaust manifold there. They actually ret retrofitted a plumbing pipe, you can see there. I just wanted everyone to notice that. I mean, it, it actually functions uh, right. It's just the way they had to run it in here. So. Um, sometimes Jeep guys do interesting things, but actually it actually works pretty good. It's uh, like that on both sides because it's got dual exhaust, and you can see this side too. And uh, right there's the horn. They beep the horn real fast. I didn't want them to do it that loud, but I, I guess they didn't have control of it. So anyways, uh, looks good underneath the hood and uh, runs good, so we'll take it and uh, show you the interior. Here we are, we're going to take a look at the uh, the inside. This is actually one of the easiest rigs I've ever had to uh, do a video on. I mean, there's not a lot of stuff to show, but I'm sure that I'll still get long-winded and uh, do a 30-minute video. But um, anyways, just wanted to show you across the dash. You know, if you want to flip the, the windshield forward, you just hit these two latches. There, it's got a grab handle. It's actually been, uh, it's got seat belts in it as well. And it's got CJ, um, five seats in it but they uh i think this pattern on it is actually it's kind of grown on me it's uh i think that's a british um camouflage but they're uh they actually look nice uh, i don't mind them in there they look good you know if you got grandkids or something like that and you wanted to go on a parade or something like that you could put them back here if you'd want to put a couple seat belts on it but uh overall it it looks good you can see here on the floors they're actually in pretty nice shape. You can see a little little hole there, a little drain hole. There's little drain holes here as well. There's a little uh, lever you can go back and forth. You can see some different repairs. Actually, someone made a, a mount there um, for the, the shifter and stuff. Right here is your putting in four-wheel drive. This is for uh, high and low. And then right there is the PTO here as well and uh, we'll show you how to operate that 
And uh, underneath here, there's a little compartment behind this seat so you can flip forward. You can just lift this up. A little compartment there, you can put tools and, and different things. Yeah, and then, you know, the floor looks nice. Nice there as well. And uh, go around here to the back. Oh, can you help me do this? Oh, yeah. I think that does. Uh, here, yep. go up there and open it real fast. He was talking about that uh, side vent up there. Right here, you can see underneath the floor. Oh, that was nice. Does it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Looks nice. You can see some little repairs back here. And uh, there was actually some uh, welding underneath, and they, they welded it up on each corner on this side. And uh, I'll show you that underneath the car. But, um, anyways, it, it looks nice. It's not rusty. And, uh, and when I say it, it's not rusty, there was probably rusted spots on it before and they made repairs and uh, on it. So, um, but they did a good job. You can actually look underneath the cushions here on both sides. And they look, look in good shape. Tailgate is real nice. And we'll just hop around here to the other side to show you the, the front floor. You know, again, it's in very nice shape and uh, not rusty you know the best thing about this rig is it's it's really a fun just run around um you can just do a lot a lot of different things you know use it in parades and go to cars of coffee and uh you know if you have a piece of property or something uh you could actually use it put a winch on the front because it's got a pto and uh use it for different things you could actually put an ice cream maker up on the front run an ice cream maker that'd be kind of fun i saw that on a land rover actually and uh it was really cute and uh so pretty easy to do because everything's it's just got one more attachment up there it needs so and you can see here it's got its gas tank underneath the seat and uh so don't smoke and uh so anyways we'll uh show you some other stuff a minute ago uh my friend wayne he uh, popped this open for me uh when we were looking in the back and uh, this is that little vent it lets a lot of air in but if you look inside here there's a little lever you just kind of grab it you can push it open it's actually functionable and uh, pretty cute actually too. Uh, I like that. The other thing too I wanted to show you while it was up here, the uh, it's got a little glove box and uh, so and it works as well. Here we are in the. Uh little Jeep we're gonna you know take it out for a little drive and stuff we're actually making our way back to the shop as well uh, Michael from bring a trailer is gonna stop by and visit us and uh, when they did that little special uh, interview and visit us uh, a little while ago uh, he said he'd show back up and and he's coming back today he's actually going on that rally up in Portland and uh, looks pretty fun I was gonna try to go on it but it's our anniversary this weekend and uh, 23 years so um, I'm pretty lucky. I don't know if she is, but I'm pretty lucky. And uh, so, anyways, I just wanted to show you how it uh, how it starts. Right here is a choke. Pull it out. Right here, you can actually hear the fan came on, and that's because we're out uh, driving it around. But that's the electric fan up front there. But anyways, when you usually start, you pull the choke out. Doesn't really need it now, and just turn it on. There you go. You know, it usually just fires right up, and uh, everything seems to be working good. The odometer's not working, but the speedometer does. I'm not sure exactly what's wrong with the odometer. The uh, temp gauge isn't reading uh, here because it's it's got an aftermarket one here on the dash. The PSI reads good. It's sitting at about 25, and uh, it's got an amp gauge over here on the other side. So here's your lights. I actually forgot what that one was. Um, the uh, just can't remember. There's a choke shows you how to do the four-wheel drive and uh, you got your wipers they're individual you can run them at both times uh, obviously but um, we'll just pull out here and uh, drive it it's actually really uh, pretty scenery out here in uh, Oregon the uh, clutch feels real good and uh, if you just look around I mean we got a lot of grass fields and hazelnut fields and, and different things but it's uh, it's pretty 
out here. You know, this isn't the most quiet uh, rig, so if you're used to, uh, you know, driving a 2015 BMW or Mercedes or something like that, this is uh, something a little different. It's definitely something, something fun. And, uh, you know, probably the speed that it likes is probably about 45, maybe 50. It wanders just a little bit. And, uh, you know, they made these pretty much for off-road, but it's got military tires on it. You know, they're bias fly, so it wanders around, but it, it doesn't do bad. And uh, so it's it goes right down the road pretty good, but I just wanted to make sure you, you know, knew that it's, you know, it's not perfect. And uh, so I'll show you. Um, we'll go up, up here and uh, turn around, and uh, we'll just take a little shortcut right here, but we're gonna go ahead and put it on my lift and I can show you how all the, the four-wheel drive and everything works in it as well and uh, show you how the, the components work there. And uh, we'll just take a little uh, shortcut here. It'll be kind of fun to put it up on the, uh, on the lift and show you the wheels all moving and stuff. So this is what these things were meant to do. See you in a bit. Hey, here we are underneath the little CJ5. Um, it's actually in really good shape underneath. You know, it's obviously, uh, you'll be able to see that it's, it's used and stuff, but um, <clears throat> it's nice to do a video underneath. Uh, just makes it uh, easier to see things, different components. You'll still see the still photos and everything. And, uh, but just doing a video, I can just point out different things a lot better. So um, one thing we're gonna do here, and don't try this at home, uh, we're gonna start it up on the lift and you know, we're safe and making sure it's secure But I wanted to show you it working in uh, four-wheel drive. I wanted to show you that really cool PTO um, On it underneath and uh, show you that that's working as well. So we'll uh, just do a little walk around uh, around here and uh, Just show you some stuff on it. You can see here the new tires You know the little nubs and everything got these from Coker these are uh, Firestone military tires. And uh, we'll just uh, walk around here up in the front. This is a Dana 30. I think that the uh, 64 CJs uh, came with a Dana 30 and a Dana 44 in the back. It does say 44 on the back, but I didn't see anything on here that, that said 30. We can look that up a little more, but you can see 27A, their date codes and, and different things. We did. Uh, Make sure there was uh, fluid in and everything, topped everything off. But there is a little bit of, you know, little drips um, that you can see here. Some of it we wiped off there, but a, a few little drips. You'll see a few little drips on the motor. Um, it will drip a couple little spots on on the floor, so you might probably want to take a pan and uh, put it underneath here. But here you can see up here in the front, everything's been lubed, and uh, you can see the all the fresh uh, grease and everything. You can see the shocks are in good shape. Um, you can see here there was, you know, a lot of these old Jeeps had different repairs and different things. But you can see here they probably had some kind of piece there and it's been cut off. You can see some welding right here on the front horn. And uh, they might have replaced this at one point too. You know, a lot of people do different uh, things with these. And you can see all, also here where they welded, welded up there too. And uh, we'll go ahead here. Look at the other side of the axle. You know, everything looks pretty good. U-joints look pretty good. I don't see any dripping in or anything out of the, the pinion seal. I can see a little bit of some little oil drips right here. And uh, it might be coming from the pan gasket. You know, this was kind of detailed underneath when, when we got it. We did a couple little tiny things. Um, but overall, um, it's in pretty clean shape. You can see here, the this is where that PTO comes out and it continues forward. So you can put a winch on the front or run some other kind of machinery and stuff. So that's actually kind of handy. You see here, it's the PTO hooked on the back. It's a Ramsey winch company. Uh, very popular, especially on uh, military rigs. You can see um, here, Spicer. You can see there's Spicer on the transfer case, and uh, everything works. We'll show 
show that working here in a minute. Go ahead and look at the rear end. You know, everything looks real tight. Go around here to the back. You can see here 44. You can see here a tag. 4411, 427. Patent numbers up there. You know, I don't see any leaking out of the brakes or anything. It actually brakes really nice. We'll go ahead and look at the floors. Inside the, the inner tubs all look pretty nice. You know, it's actually a pretty little solid Jeep. Not perfect by any means, but pretty solid. And you can see a couple little repairs that were made here on the floor. You can see a couple little repairs up here on this side. I already kind of showed you that from the other side on the mat. You can see here on the inner tub, you know, everything looks clean. Go ahead and here, look at the bottom of the rockers. You know, they look in nice shape. You know, the floors look nice. Not rusty. You can see here it's got, uh, um, I forgot what those are called. <laughs> They're, uh, what are those called? The mufflers. Cherry bombs. Cherry bombs, yeah. The, uh, I just had a mental issue going on here. You can look here on the other side. You know, they look, look in good shape. You can see here the floor, again, is real, real clean. And, uh, you can see some, this must have been a support support they put in here. I think they might have had uh, at one point kind of bad welding right there, but I think they had some uh, steps in here before. And uh, we'll just look up here in the inner inner wheel wells. You know, again, it's it's not rusty and uh, it's actually in pretty good shape. Go ahead and look here in the inner wheel wells, tow boards look good. And uh, all the body mounts on it look like they're in in pretty good shape. You can see the rubber right here is in, in good shape as well. They probably replaced those at some point. I can't see that one here. Yeah, you see, you know, they're they're pretty new uh, rubber mounts and stuff. So also uh, the the tank. This is a your gas tank's right underneath here, and there's a tank crane right there. So, um, anyways, we'll uh, go ahead and. Uh, we're gonna fire it up here on the lift and uh, show you how the four-wheel drive works and the and the PTO. Hey, this is Jason from Denworks. Here we are. We uh, just want to show you how it uh, it works in four-wheel drive and everything. You can kind of do a test on a lift. I suggest you probably don't do this at home um, if you don't know what you're doing. We uh, halfway know what we're doing, so that makes it better. But I just want to show you here on the front hubs. I already, already locked this. You can see where it says lock right here. And you'll see a couple little notches. These are Warren hubs, old school style. And uh, this would be a way for anyone that has these to um, actually see how they work. So I already have this one locked, but you have to have them both locked. And so see, I can, I'm sitting here turning this. This is your front uh, drive line to your front axle. So this one's locked, but the other one's not locked. So you're gonna, that's why that's not turning. So I'm gonna come here around here to the other side. And you can see here, it says free on both sides. So so you go ahead flip these up and you'll see here it says lock and you'll see these little nubs right here kind of little marks you know sometimes when you're out in the mud and, and stuff you know this is all dirty so you can just kind of feel so you just you just turn this whoops sorry you just turn that so you can see it says lock and lock tap those back in and uh, so now now you can see that axle's moving. See that? The drive line. So we'll go ahead and uh, start it up here. 
and uh, we'll put it in four-wheel drive. You can hear it running up here, but we'll show you, you know, the back wheels moving by themselves, and uh, then we'll put it in four-wheel. Actually, it's going to be all in four-wheel drive right now because I've got the... Well, actually, it won't. Uh, go ahead and start it up. There we go. So we're going to put it in first gear, turn the back wheels. There we go. We can see the back one's moving. So go ahead and uh, one thing you always want to do, you always want to put your foot on the brake because sometimes when you're up on a lift, you forget that the uh, the wheels are moving. And uh, so now we're going to go ahead and put it in four wheel drive. And again, we got them both in lock position. There we go. And then go ahead and uh, put the brake on. Want to make sure they're all stopping. And then we'll go ahead and put it in four wheel low. That's four wheel low. And uh, so that's good there. And uh, actually do that again. See here you can see that axle moving the drive line. You can see the drive line moving back there. And also I wanted to show you here, this actually pinion seal is leaking just a little bit. And uh, we'll probably take a look at that and uh, see if I can replace that. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, show the PTO working. There's a lever between the seats. Here's the PTO here. See there you can see it's spinning. So everything's uh, functional here, so that's really good. So hopefully that gives you a good idea um, how the four-wheel drive system works in this. And again, and to put it back in two-wheel drive, and unlocking the hubs, we'll just go ahead and unlock those and uh, it'll just make everything free again, but you, you need to make sure to do both sides. So hopefully that uh, gives you a good look.